It's your post-match bite as Liverpool go top of the league. It wasn't spectacular, it wasn't pretty, but Liverpool very much have the foot on the throat of Manchester City. We're in the church, and with Cameron and with Club Lundell, it's me and Ryan standing in for Gareth Roberts. This one is going out on YouTube for free, by the way. And Phil, it wasn't pretty, but it doesn't really matter because now it's about taking the wins off getting the points on the board and Liverpool have absolutely done that today yeah absolutely it's about it's not just about winning it's about winning in a way that means you don't overexert yourself like my dad sitting next to me dad he said to me in half time I'd be great if we won 4-0 and I went there's no way we're winning 4-0 because if this goes 2-0 we'll both declare and just they'll go goal difference Sam we'll go three points big game on Tuesday night we'll leave it there shake hands thank you very much and it didn't quite pan out like that because the second goal comes as late as it does, but I don't think any Liverpool player genuinely sprinted after about 25 minutes today. It was very, very first gear. Uh, if, we'd have won it, if we could have won it in neutral, I think we'd have had a good go at it. But we were very, very sort of relaxed. Some people a bit nervous towards the end. That wasn't too bad, because I don't think there was any way they were really getting near our goal without us giving them the ball. Um, but yeah, job done. Roll on, move on Tuesday night. Fabinho's had 70 minutes rest. Everything's great. It is job done, Cam, and I think one or two around me were getting a little bit nervous I understood that to some extent but it did just feel like Liverpool were playing what was in front of them they're not a great side Watford we are a great side we didn't necessarily show it today in all aspects of the game but that said three points was all that mattered yeah and like you know there was the international break where you could see that in the first 20 they were all still knackered weren't they and towards and mo in most of the game it did look like it at the end of the day we can say about how ugly it was if we go on to the end of the season and do what we can, no one's going to remember that performance, are they? Do you know what I mean? It's just, as you said, it's just getting about getting the points at this stage of the season and just going from there, really. Phil, in terms of the selection, a little bit surprised, maybe with one or two. I thought it would be touch and go with Trent. It ends up being Gomez. He actually puts in some really good balls. There's one or two issues maybe with his distribution at times, but in terms of delivery, you see it for the goal. It was excellent. Curtis Jones starts as well. Doesn't really come off for him. No, it doesn't, I think. I think it was interesting that him and Salah both didn't play brilliantly on that right-hand side. They had Gomez instead of Trent, which makes the life a little bit harder for them. It means there's less of an outlet for them. But what I also thought was a bit of a problem for the two of them was that Watford really overloaded that side of the pitch. And they had no, there's no space over there. And I think it's part of the reason that Thiago was so incredible. Is Thiago had the freedom of the pitch because there were no Watford players anywhere near him. Because they were all basically stopping Mohamed Salah from turning them inside out again. Uh, you know, you'd play the hand you dealt and it meant that Thiago could be brilliant. They were the payoff for that was Salah and Jones were brilliant. But I, I just I enjoy watching Thiago so much today, you know. Thiago Cam, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, honest to God, it was some performance, especially first half. It was an absolute demonstration on a variety of passing. Someone described it as a little bit Mascherano, a little bit Zabby at times. You saw all of that in this game. I thought you saw every aspect of what was great about a central midfielder. It was some performance. Yeah, he was brilliant. There was a time in the first half where he plays him into Jones, but he must have took about 10 players out. And it's like no one even seen it. Cammy took like, 45,000 people in the yeah, ground I, out I, and the I, other 10 were watching. Jones by surprise because he put him to the upper hand, he didn't in the end. But like, he's just so, so, it's such a joy to watch him, isn't it? And if you can keep him fit for this last few games of the season, he'd be so important. But it's just such a shame that we didn't have him when he was younger. You weren't going to get as many years out of him because he is honestly one of the best I've seen in the red shirt. He is that good. He's levels above everyone else. It's about to join him now, though, Phil. Is so Cam's right. You've maybe got to wrap him in cotton wool. I wasn't convinced he'd start today. I was a little bit unsure what he'd do with the midfield. I thought, well, he's got to have an eye on Tuesday as well, even though there's a bit more wriggle room because you've got the two games. But he does play him. Obviously, takes him off. That felt like loads of sense. Did the midfield? We talked about Curtis Jones, but. It, apart from Thiago, it didn't really feel like it had quite the right balance for me today. No, I thought Henderson was all right. I thought Henderson was fine in the six. I think he does the six better than people give him credit for, to be yeah, perfectly fair. honest. Yeah. I think Fabinho doesn't start. If Fabinho plays 90 minutes in Bolivia on Tuesday night, which was playing 90 minutes in South America and was playing in Bolivia at about 10,000 yeah. feet or whatever yeah. it is, which takes it out of you. So that wasn't a surprise for me. Again, it was. It did its job. We create did create a great deal, but... I'm not particularly bothered about performances at the end of the year. I'm more bothered about if we win that we've managed our way through it and we haven't had to scrap because you can win 2-0 and you can be in a battle and you can be fighting and you can be 
having to go to the well for 90 minutes. We weren't going to the well for 90 minutes today. We were just going to the tap and it was fucking dribbling. That was it was it was a piece of piss really. And that's just what we've got to do in games like this. Take the opportunities to sort of rest while you're playing in effect. And thought we I thought we managed the game really well in that in that in that aspect. I wouldn't disagree with any of that. I mean Phil talks about creativity there, Cam. A lot of it actually came from Joe Gomez. He had a game where I thought at times there was really, really good signs, certainly the delivery, one or two passes went astray. But in terms of some of that crossing, I mean, the cross for Jota for the first goal, it's an outstanding ball. Yeah, it is, it's brilliant. And again, like we'll probably come on to Jota as well, but with Gomez, I was watching, I was thinking, because it's Trent and Robbo, because they've changed that position so much, if that was Gomez like 10, 15 years ago, you're probably saying that's a really good full back performance. But now, because it's Trent, it's changed so much. And like, but on, on the eye, I thought he had a good game and he follows up from a good game of Forest the other week as well. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be putting Trent to the swords for his position, because he's not. But to have someone who can just come in in games like this and put performance in like that, it goes such a long way. You're going to need the whole squad, aren't you, Phil? We're going into what can only be described now as, as an unbelievable part of the season, but it is game after game after game. Another player who stood out, certainly first half, Jossie gets his 20th goal of the season. I mean... You run out of words, Phil. 20 fucking goals for the season. I mean, when you sign him, you think it's not a bad signing, but surely no one's seeing this level of performance where he's such a threat in the air. His movement is foul esque It's been referenced on other shows. You can absolutely see why it does get mentioned. It's another really strong, certainly first 45 from Jota. The, the cross from Gomez is good, but the run makes it even better, doesn't it? Because if he doesn't make such a good, well-timed, accurate run. Ben Foster probably gets the ball, yeah. punches it or catches it, and you go, oh, that was a bit frustrating. It's another one of those pointless crosses you hang in the box, which Liverpool do over the last few years have probably done a bit far too often when they're panicking, but he makes the most of it and he makes gets on the end of it. I thought Foster was a little bit unlucky to come for it and got no, get nowhere near it, but it was mostly down to Jota. There's, I thought he was a bit quiet before then as well, but yeah, he, does this he does this regularly. I think there was Inter Milan the other week where he had a quiet game, doesn't get the goal and does nothing. And it annoyed me a bit, but when you see it today and it's like, all right, sound, that's why you sort of tolerate it a bit more, because he probably gets away with some lack of involvement or the wrong decision a bit more than others because you know he does that, and that's absolutely sound. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's some commodity to have, Cam, isn't it, where you've got a player who, as Phil says, he might not be involved all the time. There will be periods where you're thinking, I've not seen Josh for five minutes. And there are times where, in the build-up, it might break off him a little bit. And I think that's something that he's probably going to work on in terms of his build-up uh, his build up play. But in terms of a goal threat, there's very few in the league who can rival Diogo Jota for a goal threat. He is outstanding in front of goal. His movement's second to none, and he proved that again today. Yeah, I mean, you look at him, like, his finishing is in, into the box. Like, it's just like... So many of our old strikers in, and you see so many like like Owen Torres, whoever. But like the only times I noticed him today when he was leaping up above half the centre halves, and like the, the lad his size, how high he gets in the air, it's unbelievable. And the power he gets with his head, he's such a good striker to have. And I think throughout the season, it's key that you have different players performing at different times. And I think now at the end of the season, we'll look back at this period, and this was Jota's time because he's been brilliant the last few weeks. Phil, there was one or two near me said before, getting slightly nervous. But apart from that one big chance they have second half, it didn't really feel like it was ever going to come for Watford. He does the three changes, and some of them are there probably what you would describe as big hitters as well coming on. Dennis comes on, Josh King comes on. But it never felt for me for one second, bar that one big chance, that they were ever likely to get anything out of this. I might be wrong, but I think that big chance of a mile offside as well, it by the way. Offside, yeah. but it didn't the see line's were never put his flag no, up. He didn't, it was like, he didn't. I was looking at him and it was like he just couldn't be bothered yeah. or something. He was, like, he was like, I, I think was. it was offside, but if we just give him a goal kick, we're all happy, aren't we? Yeah, it looked, I wasn't too far off me in the line with it, and it was like, if, you're saying if, it's he, if he scores, that's up I was for me. like, if he scores, it won't matter. No, everyone by me was just like, well, if he scores, it doesn't matter, because it was offside, so... I think there was, there, there was a Kuka one first half, wasn't there? And I yeah, think yeah. one of my mates reckons that was offside as well. It looked offside. Yeah. And cop end, so it did. So they've had two chances and neither of them could physically possibly be a goal yeah. anyway. So I look forward to match of the day showing them both later. <laughs> and play with the BT have been going, oh, what if we just scored this? And my mates sat at home throwing things at telly going, it would have been offside, wouldn't it? <laughs> and he's just, he's just getting progressively more annoyed, apparently. Yeah. It was, there was no point where I ever thought, oh, we think we'll be in here. 
there was one where Thiago does something mad where he knocked the ball round. I think it was Sa. Yeah. And then oh, tried to he slides to try and knock it back to Robertson, does it really badly, and all of a sudden they're away. And that was the closest he got last 10-15. But do you know it? what though? Like it's the context of the game. Cut it like there's so much rides on it. Do that was at the start of the season, we'd all be saying just one two nils one of them games. But you can feel it a bit now where everyone starts it's like bloody hell, it's happening sort of thing, like as the game's going on, but it's it's a three points, isn't it? In terms of other standouts, kind of thought, the two centre halves again looked imperious to be honest. I mean, one or two maybe times where Watford do look to go along and maybe they win a couple of headers, but overall I thought Van Dijk especially doesn't really put a foot wrong. Yeah, and again he's just one of them times when you're saying about managing games throughout the game. I don't think there was ever a time where Van Dijk looked like like you know, where he was like sweating or like he was under pressure, out of breath or whatever. Just one of them games where he can just conserve his energy through the game. So he's played 90 minutes, but it's not really a full-on 90, and he's just seen the game out. But he had the centre back as well. But I thought it was Thiago, heads and shoulders above everyone for me. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that, Phil. I mean, you can't really discuss this game without looking at the context of what's going to happen in the coming weeks. As we're recording this. Without getting too Kevin Keegan about it, City are going to Burnley and I've got to fucking get something, by the way. It I think does, win about 4 And mate. they might do, and they absolutely might do. But it feels like what you said before about managing games, managing minutes, not expending too much energy, that looked like Liverpool were at that today. They were thinking about that, they were thinking about making sure we don't give away too much in terms of energy. They've got Benfica Tuesday. City, by the way, we know, but had to go twice and us twice. That all of a sudden now going into that Burnley game for them feels like a big deal. It does, it does mean to see the teams in the tunnel behind us on Saturday, haven't we? Some lads over there got very excited. I thought you started good. Yeah, started oh, shouting, know. started shouting in very wool accents. By the way, they'd be disappointed when it's not on the telly yeah. in a minute. Everything <laughs> gets on, don't they? I know, yeah. Like, yeah, they, it's one of those where Burnley are a weird team where. If you get to 55, 60 minutes and it's nil-nil, you sort of start to panic. But, I, I mean, it's going out for free on YouTube. I would love it if there's a video of me getting had off by Burnley not getting hammered 4-0, because I think they'll kill them. So They may well kill them, Cameron. I know we're, we're slightly digressing now, but I think we have to. That game, for me, that game next week has got my attention now. And I know there's a game coming on Tuesday, and Benfica... They're not a world-class team by any stretch. They got beat last night. We'll have to take them seriously. But that game next week now is very much on the horizon. And it did feel like today Liverpool had one eye on that. Not only with selection, because Fabinho doesn't start, but just in terms of managing those minutes and managing those energy levels. Yeah, it is. It's just, you can't even point, you could do a whole show on wow, next week's so big, but it's just, it's just crazy that we're having a Champions League quarter final, and our most of our minds are probably going to be on Sunday, isn't it? Like it's one of the biggest games the Premier League's probably ever going to see. It's so, so big. But yeah, I mean, I know we're saying today about how we had the best performance, but I think next week you'll see a different animal. Next week you'll see a totally different Liverpool team come out. And yeah, it's just I don't even want to talk about it just yet because my nerves are shot already. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important, Phil, because. I think most people understood today it was just about getting over the line and ticking off another win. That said, one or two by me, we're getting a little bit frustrated and there was one or two moans and groans, but you do sometimes just play what's in front of you. Liverpool today, they play a Watford team that they know can't really compete. I've got no doubt in my mind, come next week, the side will look slightly different, but the performance levels will undoubtedly go up and I'm not sure too. It massively helps when you do the ridiculous upgrade. We're going to do it right back as well, doesn't it? That's no offence to Joe Gomez. I thought he was good today. But we're going to swap Joe Gomez, who's not a right back, for one of the best, if not the best, right backs around. And that helps. There's, I think Tuesday night is big for me because I think we've got to go over there and win the tie. Not necessarily to qualify, but just to make our life easier. Because between the two Man City games... If we can have a bit of a rest while they've got to go to Atletico Madrid away, like the way these fixes are falling for us is pretty helpful because we get Tuesday, first leg, then Sunday, yeah. but then it's Wednesday, Saturday. Our Wednesday, Saturday is far more preferable to Manchester City's because they've got away in Spain on the Wednesday. We're at home. Now, we're playing an inferior team anyway, 
without having to go to Spain. So if we can go over there on Tuesday, get that tie done, and you can make three or four changes, you can do a shimmer at left back, for example, give Robertson a rest. There's, there's so much. Every game is linked to the next game at the minute and yeah. the game after, yeah. and that's why you see stuff like today where some people are going, "Why can't Liverpool win this game four 0 Liverpool should be winning this game four 0 and you've got to go. Well, the context of everything, it's, and not it's, only it's that, all linked in. I mean, you're spot on, but it, it can't be the same lads every week. No, it can't. It cannot be the no, same lads, be. and you, you might want to see a midfield of Thiago Henderson and Fabinho all the time. I know others might want to see Keita in there for instance but you're not going to see the same three lads week in week out when a game is coming pretty much every three or four days but the majority of the games you just need to get two of them on the pitch and then the third lad whether it's Jones Oxlade Chamberlain Keita uh, Elliot Milner whoever it is they can come in and they don't need to be 10 out of 10 they just need to come in and be sort of six and a half, seven, and let everyone else do their thing they just need to give the other one their 6 out of 10 enables the other one to be 8 out of 10 the week after and that's what it's all about. Just back to today, Cam, um, briefly. I thought Bobby Firmino at times today was superb. I thought his off the ball work was tremendous at times. I wouldn't say he was rolling back the years, because that makes it sound like I'm being a little bit harsh on him. But there was, for me, elements of Bobby just looking like maybe he did 18 months ago, where he linked up everything so well. It knitted together because of him. I thought... It was a really, really strong performance from Bobby. It was, it was good. It was good to get him minutes as well, I thought. I noticed he was dropping a lot more deeper as well, which was so much used to seeing. And like you're watching him sometimes, and when he is dropping, he's linking in Thiago or he's linking in one of the midfielders. He's such a key player to have because he's such an unusual striker, isn't he? And we've seen that over the years. We can sit here all day and talk about Firmino, but now I thought he put a, a, good, he put a good shift in for today, like that, Bob. And Luis Diaz, Phil, who we've all raved over. He's been nothing short of sensational since he's come in. Doesn't need to get any minutes today. I always felt that they'd have an eye on the Tuesday game because obviously he's played against them before. He knows them really well. He's scored against them really well. But again, testament to the squad where you haven't got to use Lewis Diaz today. No, I, I agree with you. I think Diaz starts on... Uh, the people clapping the socks sat in there. I was getting excited. <laughs> I mean, what you second. said there was great to be yeah. fair. Lewis, so I, Lewis, I think Lewis Diaz is always going to start on Tuesday. I think... He picks teams and blocks, doesn't he? And it was like, right, you're playing on Tuesday. Plays twice for Colombia. He plays two full 90s. Yeah. You could see Salah, yeah. Mane, Diaz. For yeah, yeah. I, that's Tuesday. what I think it'll be. If you said to me, now what's the front three? That's what I think it will be. And the, the, the fact that Diaz doesn't get on is a sign of the squad. There's another great example of how good the squad is today. Harvey Elliott's played for the under-23s this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I, mean? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I noticed he wasn't on the bench and that feels like maybe for Elliott there's still a little bit of learning to do with, I think, Everyone, myself included, maybe even some of the backroom team, by the way, who've been champion earlier, maybe they've realised actually he's not quite there yet and it's going to take a little keeps, bit of time. Keeps feet on the ground for yeah, a young kid as well, that doesn't it? It does. No, I'm not at all. Cam, man of the match? Thiago, head and shoulders. Phil, Thiago. Thiago, full house. We want you to continue. We want you to look at being part of the Anfield Rap journey. You can subscribe, anfieldrap.com. Eight more to go up the fucking Reds.